Hello, Scroll Tribe 2.0. It is hump day, my dudes. It is Wednesday. It is March the something, 6th? March the 6th, uh, a hump day, March the 6th. Um, so this may be a difficult conversation. I just want to put it out there ahead of time. This could be uh, triggering. This could be something that may cause issues. It has to do with uh, inappropriate sleepovers. I, that's how I want to phrase this. Okay. So for those of you who know, you know, so just as a heads up, as a warning, whatever, my daughter is 14 and a half. We got to have that half in there. She wants everybody to know she's 14 and a half and she has had, let me see how many sleepovers she's had in her life. Um, none. So she, she's had one sleepover with a friend. The rest, all her friends have had sleepovers with us. And the only reason she has had a sleepover with a friend is because there were no men in the house. It was a mom, single mom and her daughter and my daughter spent the night with them. No men anywhere. And some people may not understand that. Um, and some people understand that completely on why I, as a mother, do not want my daughter staying at a house with men in it. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I came across this article today that literally had me seeing red. It made me want to physically harm somebody. It made me want to throw up. It made me want to cry. It's, it elicited so many different emotions and it's one of those things where you feel all these emotions and there's literally nothing you can do with them. And so I'm talking to you guys because my daughter and I, we've had these conversations numerous times. She knows why she's not allowed to spend the night at certain houses. She knows what is considered a red flag or a warning sign. If she happens to be around a group of boys or grown men and what is and is not okay with the way she is looked at, the way she is talked to, if she is touched, any of these things, she is fully aware of what, what the, the boundaries and the parameters are when it comes to how certain people should interact with other certain people. And I know that there are women out there who are just as bad as men. Like there's, there's going to be people who go, well, I don't let my son go to so-and-so's house or to other houses because of the moms, because of the sisters, because, of, and trust me, I fully get it. I'm speaking from a mom's perspective with a daughter. Doesn't mean all the other perspectives do not matter. I just can only speak from mine. Okay. So I, I came across this article and, um, <laughs> It literally says Oregon dad accused of drugging girls smoothies at daughter's sleepover. I'm sorry. Excuse me. It, it's like everything that nightmares are made of, in my opinion, and, and why it's so hard for people to trust people. Because, I mean, it, it could be, it doesn't have to be a sleepover, a, 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 a daughter's friend's dad. It could be, it could be an uncle. It could be a family friend. It could be, it could be your own father. It could be your own brother. It could be, you know, you know it could be anybody. But for me, um, it's scarier it's a scarier thought because I know for a fact, it's never my husband. It's never my brother-in-law and there that's it. Those are the only men in my daughter's life. Right. Um, so for her to go to somebody else's house who has a dad, a stepdad, a boyfriend, um, a older brother, any of those kind of things, it gives me pause. It gives me cause for concern because it's not something that I trust. And so there's that. So when I see this article, I'm going to share it with my daughter. When she gets home from school, I'm going to say, Hey kid, I want you to read this so that you can understand again, why it's perfectly fine for your, your friends to come here, but not for you to go there. And I know so many parents who understand exactly what I'm saying and who feel exactly the same way that I do. I think I just accidentally paused my, I touched this thing. Hold on. Let me pause, make sure I didn't mess this up. Okay, no, we're good. So the, I hit a little button right here. I was trying to move this. I could feel it sticking to my chest. So I, I touched it and it put it hit the recording button and I saw the light go red on my little DJI device. It's plugged in over here in the edge of my phone. And I was like, oh crap, I don't wanna mess it up. But anyway, where was I? So I know a lot of parents are uh, understand when I say your friends can come here, but you can't go there, right? So this article, I, I just wanna I just wanna bring it to everybody's attention. For those parents out there who I don't wanna say are um, not thinking about things like this, but I think it needs to be said that these things do happen and parents need to be reminded and kids need to be reminded that these things do happen. So this says an Oregon father, um, 
was accused of doing this. This was, um, August 26, 2023. Okay. This man, his name is Michael Maiden, a 57 year old. He is in a, he's in jail. Um, he wait, hold on. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. The whole article is about the fact that his wife is divorcing him, which I'm like, who gives two shits? I would have, you know, divorced him too. And honestly, if that was my situation or anything like that, I don't know that the jury ever would have had to be there because they never would have found his body. Okay. So, um, Oregon father accused of drugging three 12 year old girl smoothies at a sleepover for his daughter divorced his wife just weeks after the alleged incident this is according to a court. So a Cl Clackamas County grand jury on February 26th. Okay. On February 26th this year, a couple days ago, uh, indicted Michael Ma Maiden 57 on three counts of causing another to ingest a controlled substance, three counts of application of a schedule four controlled substance to another and three counts of delivery of a controlled substance to a minor in connection with the August 26, 2023 sleepover he hosted in Lake Oswego, whatever. Um, weeks after the sleepover on October 17th, his wife filed for divorce and the, um, there, she said to get his, the whole $1.2 million home. Like they obviously have money. Okay. Now in 2000, August, 2023, Authorities were alerted to three 12 year old girls who were hospitalized in Lake Oswego after testing positive for benzodiazepine. I don't know how to say any of these drugs, uh, a depressant that produces sedation and hypnosis. Why those two things are together, I don't understand, number one. The girls told police that they had been at a sleepover the night before, during which Maiden made them mango smoothies and insisted they drink them, according to an affidavit obtained by Fox News Digital. So, um... Mr. Mr. Maiden, um, you know, piece of scum Maiden is presumed innocent. And we hope that people will reserve judgment until all the facts and circumstances are known. According to his defense attorney, Mark Kogan, who I don't see how he lives with himself, but that's fine. Um, said in a statement to Fox news digital, the girls sleeping over at Maiden's house on August 26, told police the suspect was constantly checking in on them and interjecting himself into their conversations. Before I go any farther, I have to wonder if his daughter ever had issues with him by herself, because it doesn't say it in this article. And I did not do like a whole like d deep dive into anything, but I saw this and I just knew we had to have this conversation. Okay. The girls sleeping over at Maiden's house on, um, Oh, we said that the girls stated they played in the sprinklers, went in the hot tub, took showers and got ready for bed at Mr. Maiden's direction. He had them play in the sprinklers, had them get in a hot tub, had them take showers and get ready for bed. The girls stated they spent the majority of their time in the basement where they were doing a spa night and watching movies while they did facials. Maiden then allegedly, I don't know why they're using the word allegedly here, made them smoothies that were dull orange in color with tiny white chunks throughout and sprinkled on top. One girl said Maiden encouraged her to try the smoothie even after she told him he, she didn't want it. Maiden also allegedly gave the girls reusable straws in different colors so they could tell whose smoothie was whose and became angry when they started sipping from each other's drinks. One victim told police she felt woozy, hot, and clumsy after drinking her smoothie and then fell into a thick, deep sleep. Another said she stayed awake after drinking her smoothie and could feel Maiden watching her by his presence as she kept her eyes shut, pretending to be asleep. She stayed awake out of fear that Maiden was going to do something. This is what got me at any point in time. If my child ever in her life feels she has to fake be asleep so that somebody leaves her alone. I, I don't even know as a parent how you deal with knowing that your child is in that situation at any point in time, whether it's from this disgusting, sick, perverted, demented man, or from a significant other they're dating or from an intruder, any of these things, like it is a terrifying thought. I, I never would have thought when I was younger that getting older would come with such emotions. Being a parent is the most terrifying thing in the world beyond terrifying. The second my child is out of my sight, I am scared until she is back in my sight. I am worried until she's back in my sight. When, when we go somewhere, like let's say the man and I leave the apartment to go to the clubhouse to give her a little, you know, practice the freedom because she will be 16 at some point and driving on her own. We leave here for 30 minutes. I'm like, what if while we're gone, she eats and chokes? Like what happens? Obviously nothing I can do about that. She's going to be on her own for like forever, like in her life. It's not like I can, you know, constantly hover over her. 
but just random fears. And this has just unlocked new fears for me, just so we're all fully aware. Um, the same girl told police she thought the suspect was doing tests to make sure we weren't awake. He allegedly went into the basement where the girls were sleeping multiple times and put his finger under a girl's nose and moved another girl's arm and body as if to make sure they were sleeping. The girl then texted her mother to come pick her up. And this is also why my child has a cell phone with service on it. I know a lot of people are like, you know, under a certain age, kids don't need phones. Well, if you're going to let your child out of your sight at any point in time, they need to have some way to communicate, not with just you, but also the police if necessary. If this girl did not have a way to communicate with her mother, what could have happened? Okay. She sent y'all, this is where I was like, I'm going to have an emotional breakdown because if I got this text from my child, I would not know what to do with myself. This is the text that this girl sent her mother. Mom, please pick me up and say I had a family emergency. This is around 1.43 a.m. They said, I don't feel safe. I might not respond, but please come get me. And then inserted crying emojis. Please, please pick up. Please, please, capital letters, exclamation points, everything. That is terror from a 12 year old to her mother from a place where she's supposed to be having fun with her friends and feel safe because other parents are there to take care of them and make sure that they are safe. This is not a place where this 12 year old is supposed to be terrified and texting her mother at 1:43 in the morning to please come pick her up because she's scared. The victim's parents showed up at maiden's home around 3 AM to pick up their children. So two of the girls there were sisters. Okay. He allegedly resisted and told them to come back in the morning, man, I wish somebody would please understand if my child is at your house and I try to pick them up and you tell me, no, please, you're never going to walk again. You'll be lucky if you can use your mouth again. Like I'm just saying, no, that's not how this works. So one victim's mother brought the, one of the girls to the hospital because she needed assistance walking and kept asking what happened. This is according to police. When officers spoke to her less than 12 hours after she drank the smoothie, they said she walked slowly and used the assistance of her mother for balance. Her eyelids were heavy and she spoke slowly. Now this guy pleaded not guilty and um, posted a $500,000 bond. And this is where I think our court system is effed up. I know you are innocent until proven guilty, but there are certain things that you should not be able to post bond for. In my personal opinion, anything that has to do with harming a child, you should not be allowed to post bond. You should sit your ass in jail until your court date. I don't care when that is. I don't care if you're innocent. I don't care if you're guilty. The second is something to do with a child. You need to sit your ass in the jail cell and wait, because if you are innocent, then you're, then, you know, you're going to be pissed obviously, but no harm, no foul, right? If you are guilty and they release you and and you do something else to hurt a child, another child, the same child, that is something that could have pre been prevented. So to let this guy out on bond, knowing he has a child, a 12 year at home that he drugged to begin with, make it make sense. It does not make sense to me. There is so much that does not make sense to me. Like the evilness of people in this world. I just, I can't, I cannot, I cannot comprehend how sick individuals are. And somebody's going to, I know somebody out there, his defense attorney probably is going to be like, he just wanted to make sure they would go to sleep because he needed sleep. He had to work the next morning. He wasn't going to do anything to him. He just wanted to make sure they were sleeping. Still wrong. I don't care. There is no justification ever to drugging children. Okay. There's no justification to going and touching them at any point in time to move their arms, to make sure they're asleep to, you know, any of these things. This is not how adults should behave. This is not how parents should behave. This is a new level of fear for every parent out there who wants their child to, you know, go out and have fun and have the sleepovers and have independence. But in the back of your mind, you're like, I can't because it's not you. It's not you. I don't trust kid. It's the adults in the situation that I don't know if I can trust. And how effed up is that? I mean, I, I don't even know what, I mean, I know actually what I would do in this kind of situation. I can't say it on here because then <laughs> YouTube will take my video down, but I know exactly what I would do in this situation. And for other mothers and fathers out there who feel like I do, I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I would do in this situation too. It's not going to be a sit back and pray for their soul. <laughs> there, nope. It's not going to be one of those. It's going to be, um, y'all know, I can't say it, but y'all know, because Oh, I wish somebody would. No, I don't. That's a horrible phrase, but y'all know what I mean. Like that's one of those things you say like, yeah, look, I can feel my neck getting hot because I am so pissed off thinking about what happened to those girls. And that, that what was the mom not there? Not that I'm not saying that, but I'm just, I'm like, was, was there, 
Was she not there? Was like he the only one checking on these girls? That's another red flag to me. If you go for a sleepover and there is no woman in the home, it makes it harder for me as well to, to trust it. Not that there's anything wrong with single dads. There are plenty of single dads out there who are absolutely amazing, but hopefully those single dads also understand when parents and moms don't let your their children come over for sleepovers because unfortunately there is such a there is such a I don't think stigma is the right word but issue when things like this happen and yes it could be one in a million but if that one time ha out of a million happened to be my child I could never forgive myself um and then I'd spend the rest of my life in jail for what I did <laughs> get it so I saw this and I just, I can't. And then these girls, what, what are, what are they going to be like in the future? Like how much therapy will they need? How can, are they going to stay friends? Like, how does this work for them? So many questions, so many questions and no answers, obviously, and nothing I can do about any of it, which is even worse because I am a want to fix everybody's problems kind of person. And this is something I can't fix because it's not, it doesn't involve me, but I see it. And all I want to do is hug the three girls and throat punch the guy and more, but you know, so my daughter and I will be going over this together later. So that again, she understands. And it's not me trying to scare her about men and things like that. It's me trying to make sure she fully understands the, the, the things that are out there that could hurt her, could harm her so that she understands where I, as her mother am coming from when I tell her no on things, not because I don't trust her, not because I don't love her, not because I don't want her to have fun. It's because I do love her that I say no to things. So she knows, she understands, but sometimes you have to unfortunately put these things out there in a way that like really hits at home for, for kids. And again, same thing for the boys. The boys need to understand it's not just girls who these things happen to, it's boys as well. And again, it's not just the dad. Sometimes it's the mom, sometimes it's the female, whatever. These are just conversations that need to be had with our kids no matter what, so that they understand what is right, what is wrong, what is okay, what is not, and what the red flags and the signs are of not okay situations. So whew, squirrel trap. Oh, that's what I had. I, I, I wanted to talk about, it. I needed to talk about it. Um, so I know I got a whole little chicken over there that's defrosting. It's like all cozy on its little, whatever mat thingy there. So it doesn't get all like water stuff all over the counter. Um, it's defrosting a little bit before I put it in the refrigerator to defrost more so I can cook it tomorrow. Oh, it's glorious out today. It's gorgeous. I need to go get some sun because my brain is like, it's like 10,000 squirrels just going friggin' bonkers up there right now. So I need to go woo saw a little bit outside. <laughs> um, I would like, I would like your thoughts and comments on this. It is up to you how in depth or personal you want to go with thoughts and comments on this. Do not feel like you must talk about things. If things like this have happened to you or people, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it is a safe space as far as I'm concerned, if it is something that you guys want to talk about. If not, no harm, no foul, okay? Listen, Squirrel Tribe 2.0, y'all are my favorite. I love you immensely. Thank you for letting me just be a pissed off, angry, sad, scared mom for a few minutes and have this conversation with y'all. And hopefully if y'all have kids, you have these kind of conversations with your kids, okay? It's better to have the conversations than to pretend it doesn't exist and then something happened in the future. And it could have been a, well, if we'd had this conversation, maybe there would have been different outcomes. You know what I mean? So that's that. I love y'all. Thank you for letting me have this conversation and I'll see you guys again, hopefully tomorrow. And it's going to be more upbeat. I promise I'll stay off the, the news <laughs> before I record tomorrow <laughs> so that we don't have to worry about just pissed off um, squirrel. Um, that's it. I love y'all. Bye.